Okay, so first of all, thank you for coming and deciding to attend this uh, presentation. Uh, what uh, we are going to speak uh, in this presentation is about a new sort of uh, collaboration which we are developing with our colleagues from Brazil. So it's a new idea which uh, uh, was uh, firstly discussed at the Wikimedia conference this year in Berlin. Yeah, it's so, also like an uh, yeah. uh, idea that uh, uh, make spontaneous, like uh, Cornelius uh, uh, make uh, a mutual presentation, and uh, we're talking between uh, uh, our projects in Brazil and Macedonia. And it was like a crazy idea at first, uh, how we can uh, make uh, uh, together uh, collaboration um, and uh, we are countries on uh, two different continents. Uh, so we uh, talk about that uh, in Brazil lives uh, Macedonians uh, who, are, uh, who emigrate there uh, in the past and uh, also it has a small group of Brazilians who came to, to play a handball in Macedonia. And it was like, why not to use our images that it's, uh, that it's in commons and so we can uh, have an uh, exhibition and uh, together with editing uh, challenges uh, and uh, to, to create a cultural exchange like uh, museums, galleries and uh, other uh, Guam institutions in the countries make together. Why not uh, Wikipedians uh, connect uh, on that way? So that was uh, pr uh, first idea, uh, and uh, now we, yeah, we so can present you how we arrange whole process. Yeah, thank you, Tony. So based on this idea, we decided to create a model, to work out a model who is going to be uh, some sort of templates that uh, other communities may also use uh, in uh, shaping such collaborations. So uh, let me briefly explain what's uh, the collaboration model of the photographic collaborations. First of, all, first of all, you need to have two communities who are willing to collaborate uh, with each other. Then, each community has to identify images that uh, represent uh, their geographic region or country. So, in this case, in the case of Macedonia and Brazil, the Macedonian community had to identify images which best represent Macedonia, while the Brazilian community had to identify images which best represent Brazil. And then the third and the most important steps is, step is to find GLAM institutions which provide exhibition space where we are going to present, to display the Brazilian photographs <coughs> and the Brazilians are going to display the photographs from Macedonia. So the point is to, to make a model of exchange of information, exchange of knowledge and to present in the both countries. Okay, so what are the main resources that you need to have to, to start a such uh, collaboration? So there are three, related with the three steps of the model. The first one is to have community, the second one is to, to find free photographs, and the third one is to find exhibition space, where these photographs are going to be displayed. So for each resource there is a source, it's, uh, it indicates where you should look for this uh, resource. So for the community, the best representative of the community is uh, the Wikimedia affiliate. Either it's a user group, a Wikimedia chapter, or a thematic organization, or simply uh, an informal group of users who are willing to collaborate with uh, GLAM institutions and with other communities from the other countries. About the free photographs. So, you always have to strive to provide the best you have from your country. And what are the uh, main ways to search for, for such images? The first one is to go on Wikimedia Commons and to check the quality images, the featured images and the valued images uh, from your country. And the second way is to uh, search among the winners, the winning photographs uh, uh, of the Wikilas contest, like Wikilas Earth and Wikilas Monuments. And the source for the third resource, the exhibition space, simply lies in GLAM. So this is something that only GLAM institutions can provide. Okay, so this is how a simple image should look like. So you have a framed photograph which is going to be displayed. Below the photograph you have information about what is depicted on the image. Then you have information about the author. You have to credit the author who created these three images. Free, free image. And then 
On the bottom we have uh, free license information, which proves that the image uh, was uh, uploaded uh, under a free license. And on the right side, we also think it's a very good idea to have a Curopedia code. A code which links to the content we, that we have about uh, uh, the thing depicted on the image on Wikipedia. And here we are driving to something uh, very interesting. It's not just about the exchange of images, but this Curopedia code also creates a possibility to also have site activities. To also engage the community in doing something great about promoting these images and the content which is underlying uh, behind them. So, what is it? The Curopedia codes actually require to have articles about the things that are depicted in the images. So, this invites the community to check if there are articles on that Wikipedia and if not, to organize itself in order to create these articles, to fill the content gaps. So, how it's going to work in uh, our model with the Brazilians? So, first we're going to check if we have articles about the things in Brazil, which are depicted on the images, and if we find out that we have a shortage, then we're going to organize different editing challenges, which are aimed at filling the gaps. So, what are the main approaches? So, everybody knows. The most simple one, one is to organize an editathon, and uh, it is recommended to have this editathon at the exhibition space, so uh, at the Glam Institution which provides the space, so to encourage the curators, but also to invite the community to edit articles about these images. It's also possible to have a cross-wiki editing uh, collaboration, like uh, for example to dedicate a week in which uh, the Macedonian Wikipedia community is going to uh, edit articles about Brazil and vice versa. The Brazilians are going to edit articles about Macedonia. And the third way is to organize a writing contest or an editing contest in which the topic will be dedicated to the country which is going to be uh, represented at the exhibition. Okay, so what are the benefits from this collaboration? So first we have to identify what are the beneficiaries or the parties who are going to, uh, to earn from the added value of this collaboration. So we identified four, the community, the GLAM institution, the contributors and the country. So, what is the benefit for each of them? First, for the community. It helps promote the content that you have on Wikipedia. Because if people are allowed to scan the QR code, then they're going to be redirected to the page. So, you're simply using a way which increases traffic to the articles that you have, and you're promoting your content. The other thing is the content creation. So, what you can do with the side activities is simply create the content. Because, yeah, if you organize an editor, then the participants are going to, going to edit articles on uh, the specified topic, and you're going to increase the number of articles that you have. You're going to generate new content. But it's also good for community building, because you're engaging your community, you make a link with the GLAM institutions that you're collaborating with, and you're simply doing something which is aimed at developing your capacities and building your community forward. And the last thing is that you extend new GLAM partnerships, because you need to collaborate with a GLAM institution in order to have this exhibition. Okay, so what's the motivation for the GLAM institution? How can they benefit? First of all, this helps them have program diversity. Because you come up with an idea which might have not been included in their program for the year. And that's how it helps curators work on something which they didn't uh, know about before. The second thing, this is also useful to attract visitors. Because if people are interested uh, to know something more about the country that is uh, exhibited in the GLAM institution, then they will be attracted to come to that museum, and once they come, it's much easier for them to visit it once again and again, because the curators are going to promote not only this exhibition, but also the full program, and it's much easier to uh, retain these people who visited that GLAM institution. And it's also very useful that uh, GLAM institutions 
can easily uh, engage in international collaboration with other GLAM institutions from, the country, uh, from uh, other countries or specifically for, from the country that is collaborating in the photographic collaboration. Okay, what about the contributors? So, it's always good to know that the people who contribute by uploading uh, free photographs from Wikimedia Commons can have a free exhibition of their content, free exhibition of their contribution. Because we all know that uh, photograph photographers usually uh, are very happy when they see that uh, their images are used across articles. But when you organize a community event, when you organize uh, a public event in which uh, many people can visit the institution and see their contribution, then it's uh, also some. Then it also creates a, a very good feeling for these people, and it motivates them to continue contribute to Wikimedia Commons and to the Wikimedia projects. And at the end, don't mind the country because this is a very good way to attract tourists. Because if you promote your country in another country, then some people might be interested to visit the country. If you see something interesting on the images, then it's a motivation plus to visit that country. Okay, so uh, the second part of the presentation deals mostly with the different collaboration networks in which we can make this uh, model work for uh, all communities that we have uh, in the Wikimedia movement. So, uh, what I'm going to talk about uh, are different uh, collaboration types based on different networks. So, for those who would like to uh, find out more about uh, this sort of networking, there are many uh, theories, uh, research papers about uh, uh, topographic networks. There, is, there are also um, easy explanations about how this network can be applied to model uh, real-world situations and how they can solve, uh, how they can help in solving some uh, behavioral problem, problems that uh, people and communities have. But I'm going to stick to just four of them. The first one is uh, the model of independent networks. The second one is the development of a ring network. The third one is the complete network. And at the end we have the inter interaction networks. So let's start with the first one. So, when we have independent networks, this is a sort of collaboration in which many independent collaborations are made between two communities. So, like, we have a simple collaboration with Brazilians, and they have the same with us. But this is not related to any third parties. On the other hand, we also might have a collaboration between Poland and Sweden, between uh, France and Germany, between Spain and Portugal, and etc., etc., the second one is called the Ring Network, in which we have many communities which are dependent. So, what does this mean? We have, for example, Poland promoting the Czech Republic, the Czech Republic promoting Slovakia, Slovakia promoting Poland. So, we have a ring of different communities in which everyone interacts in promoting the other one. And at the end, the ring closes that the last one promotes the first one. So, why this is important? Because this is something which shows a mutual collaboration between many communities. So this is how we say, yeah, we are very strong, because we have many communities who work together to make or to create something uh, very useful and uh, which uh, uh, adds value. The next one is called the complete network. So this is the a sort of modification of the ring network uh, with the main difference that uh, many uh, that the dependent collaborators actually uh, made collaborations between each of them so the point is that one community aims at promoting all the other communities in the network so there are so many collaboration uh, collaborations here that uh, it's a bit difficult so you have to dedicate more time, you have to dedicate uh, more resources, to put more resources in order to, uh, to make this work. But at the end, it's very interesting how all these links, how all these collaborations blend one to another. And at the end, we have the interaction networks. Uh, this is mostly aimed at explaining how one region with different communities can collaborate with another region. So, we have uh, different networks 
with uh, well-established uh, collaboration models between them. And then the idea is to have one whole network collaborating with another one. So, in our case, in the movement, it would be like uh, having the C region, the C link, collaborating with, for example, Iberacop. So the point is to find, to identify what we have from the Central and Eastern European region, to find, to identify the most represent representative photographs that uh, we can use to promote our region, and then to try to make link with Iberacop, to ask for them to do the same, to identify the most representative uh, photographs from their region, and then to organize the collaboration. And at the end, so we need, uh, we still need to mention some of the major challenges that uh, organizers may face. The first uh, of them is uh, the redefinition of the GLAM partnerships. So what we used to know about GLAM partnerships is that we come to them, we promote the idea of the Wikimedia project, and we are seeking content digitization, liberation of uh, information, and anything which is related to increasing the amount of uh, free knowledge. But in this case, we're not looking for uh, digitizing content or uh, liberating content, but we're just looking for something, for uh, an aid in uh, increasing the program diversity, in promoting an idea which is going to be included in uh, the program. Uh, the second one is uh, the difficulty with determining the size of the exhibition. So this addresses the question what is the optimal number of uh, photographs that uh, needs to be displayed? <coughs> so, there is no single question, uh, there is no single answer on this question. So, you may have an exhibition with only 10 images, but you can also uh, make an one uh, with uh, 100. And it mostly depends on the capacity of your community and uh, the willingness to get involved in the collaboration. The next one is... Uh, the selection of topics. So, it's not just to have one topic, like for example, natural heritage depicted in the images, but also think about the cultural heritage, to think about other things which are representative for the community, which needs to be uh, promoted. And the last one is uh, the right adoption of the collaboration network. So this is important because this allows you to reach out to other communities and to start up uh, other photographic collaborations. Okay. Uh, any questions? Well, thank you very much for the presentation. <clears throat> Do I see hands in the air indicating that you've got questions or comments? Your call? Yes, I see one. How did you um, select the photographs? What was the pro community process for selecting the images from the pool that you described? Uh, we have to say that uh, this is undergoing project. It is like uh, mainly idea and it is undergoing project and we are not finished with that. We are preparing our, our uh, exhibitions in Brazil and Macedonia in October. So we are just picking out, uh, picking out uh, photographs. Uh, so maybe at the next conference we will be present uh, the results of the exhibitions. And this is just an uh, idea, a model that we want to, to, to produce uh, and to, to, be, to become also a global initiative. Why not? I think I can give an additional answer. So uh, what we were doing, uh, not last night, but uh, Friday night, was uh, that we started uh, selecting the topics. So first we uh, checked out the categories on Wikimedia Commons. Okay. Uh, can you, uh, what happened? Okay. We'll wake up in a second. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, first we checked uh, the category of uh, featured pictures from uh, Macedonia on Wikimedia Commons. So we found that uh, they're not uh, pictures only depicting uh, like uh, landscapes and uh, natural scenes, but also some churches and uh, some other uh, important buildings or uh, things uh, representing the tradition. And we decided to uh, to make a blend between them to make a variety, not only to include natural heritage, but also cultural heritage, some uh, traditional scenes, uh, some dances, and uh, something else that we have uh, uh, featured uh, images from. 
and uh, we also decided to check the uh, winning images, the winning photographs from Wikilove's Earth and Wikilove's Monuments. And uh, we also decided to pick a few photographs from there uh, to be displayed during the exhibition. Okay, so no more questions for now, but I just would like to comment that I really liked uh, when you were talking about the benefits of this idea. Okay. Because I think sometimes some grand projects at least are undervalued. And the way that you have enumerated the value of such an initiative that isn't based on the typical way a, a, a grand partnership is made, so, so upload the 7,000 yeah. images. So the point is not Something to... Yeah. different still has lots of value for everyone. Yeah, thank you. benefit that I would no, have. Yeah. Yeah. And about the selection of uh, topics, uh, normally uh, we decided to avoid uh, like... Uh, uh, displaying photographs from people or from uh, some uh, biological species which can be found uh, anywhere in the world. So we decided to uh, to use something endemic, something can which I can be seen only in the country. The benefits? Yeah, sure. One more benefit that I would add. Okay. The exhibition of photographs and free traffic to the articles linked through the QRpedia code. Yeah, that's... Yeah. That's also a great idea. Yeah. Uh, any other questions, comments, uh, tomatoes or something? <laughs> Nothing? Okay, guys, uh, thank you very much for this presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for, uh, for, for being here. Now, ladies and gentlemen,